Hello and welcome to the Lewis Nichols Show and I'm really excited to bring on my next guest. If those of you last week that loved the reunion as much as we did uh, making it, of course, we've got the brilliant Philip Martin-Brown. How are you? <laughs> She's been <laughs> too much to be a millionaire, Grin. <laughs> very well, thanks, Lewis. Very well indeed. It's great to get you on for a, for a solo chat because obviously on the reunion last week we, we spoke to you, but there's so much more that I know myself and the fans would love to know about not only your career but of course the legendary Grantley so starting off for you at the beginning where did yeah. your love and your passion for acting actually come about? Um, I, I went to a grammar school and rather than be at the top end of the grammar school I was I struggled frankly my secondary school career was a disaster um, and I didn't like the school I didn't like the town my dad, bless him, was a Methodist minister. Now, this was a pretty rough town that we lived in, Barrow in Furness, and uh, it wasn't cool to say, my dad's a Methodist minister, um, because all the, 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 the boys' dads were in, worked in the shipyard, Vickers shipyard. So I just developed a coping strategy of, I was the class clown, Lewis, really. Um, I used to make the kids giggle. And I was the bane of all the teachers. I mean, they couldn't bear me. And I was politely asked to leave the school um, in my fifth year. Uh, so I left and went to a, a college of further education to do drama, because someone said, while I was at school. Do you know what? Why don't you be a comedian or an actor or something? Bing! That light bulb moment. And I thought, yeah, why not? I could be, yeah. Because everyone said, well, my, my parents said, you should be a teacher. Because in those days, if you didn't know what to do, you ended up teaching, mm -hmm. um, frankly, which is not a good plan. Um, so I went to this college and did drama and O-levels then, um, as they were known, which got me enough qualifications to get into teacher training college, where I went to do, to teach, um, to learn to teach drama and English. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. Life yeah, imitated really. art. Yeah. And I did that, got my qualification after three years, never taught. Oh, schoolboy error, sorry. Um, I'll just turn the phone off. Never taught full time. Uh, I have been in and supply taught though, a couple of times over the years. Uh, turned it off, yes. Um, and what the, I never taught full time. I, I joined a theatre group, a community theatre group. And then um, it's straight from that into TV. Um, I knew a director who used to use a pub that all us students used, and he came to see a show, and he liked my bottom. Um, we were doing a Midsummer Night's Dream, I hasten to add, and he said, well, once you've got your equity card, I can get you a job. I got my equity card with this community theatre, and then he got me seven episodes of A Horseman Riding By which was a Sunday evening drama series, um, costume drama. And then I got an agent and then the job started to, to come in. That's incredible. So they suggested you should be a, an actor, comedian, and then you were also training to be a teacher, combined Grantly Budgeon, a funny I teacher. Yeah. I know, I know. Um, wow. my, parents, my parents thought I should um, be a teacher. But then when I said I wanted to act, they were very, very supportive and helped me all that they could. Um, but the kids at school said, you should be an actor or a comedian. So 
Yeah. One Makes thing sense. that, I mean, one thing that jumps out to me there that you said that in school you were a class clown and on the reunion, uh, just after you left, we were talking to some of the cast about um, funny behind the scenes stories and all of them said that you on set, just before they would say action, would say something to make them laugh. So it seems like you've never actually lost the ability to, to be the class clown because they all had such fun memories of you uh, on set. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I've, um, I, I like a joke. I yeah. do. And I like a laugh. And these, sadly, at the moment, there's not many laughs around uh, because of the situation that we're in, all of us. Um, I can't wait for lockdown to finish now. Well, if, uh, if people want to laugh, they just need to go to your Twitter because you're uh, rolling out with the jokes <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> yes, I, 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 do, uh, I do like Twitter. Do you know I'm, um, no, I won't say it, no. I think I'll, no, I'll save that one for another time. Going to save it. Um, we, you were speaking there about obviously get, uh, going into acting and you had had many roles uh, over the years, but of course the one that really kind of cemented you uh, as a household name, of course, was Waterloo Road because this was a massive chunk of your life for so many years. And yeah. in the very beginning series, I always remember Grant Lee not necessarily being a main character, but more of a supporting character. Uh, yes. cast member so when yeah. it went on to the second third uh you know series well, did the producers and the writers come to you and say look the the audience loved the character of grant Lee. we want to make him a bigger character how did that all come about no they i don't think at the very beginning they didn't quite know what was going to happen to grant Lee. um uh and the other cast members were in flats and i was in a hotel because they weren't sure how long I was going to last, frankly. Wow. So they didn't want to shell out on a flat for six months. Um, so they just did it day to day almost um, in a hotel. And I had such a ball playing the part. And they spotted it and they started to write scenes and stories that they saw that I would relish and enjoy playing and could do. And then it just sort of snowballed from there. And then you became the longest serving, uh, probably one of the most popular cast members of, of all time, which was well, great. So, uh, well, so I'm told. <laughs> um, you know, what I loved about the character of Grantley Budgeon is when I went to school, and I know that everybody watching this can vouch for this, that we could relate to Mr. Budgeon. We all had a teacher that was yes. the grumpy, didn't want to be yes. there, you know, just had so much authority. And I know that you, you mentioned in the reunion a lovely story that actually you based this character on somebody that you knew. Yeah, Mike Holmes. Yeah, he... Uh was, a, do you know, I don't remember now what he, I think it was history he taught, uh, but he was pretty fearsome, to say the least. And I, some years later, had left and I was at college and I went into a pub when I went home to see my parents. And he was in there and I said to him, uh, he said, he said, hello, Brown. I said, oh, hello, sir. Hello, Mr. Ho, how, how are you? He said, I'm all right. He said, what are you up to? I said, well, um, I'm bottom, sir. He said, you always <laughs> were, Brown, you always were. But thank you. And, um, <clears throat> and then this other lad, well, man, went up to him while I was there and said, oh, Mr. Holmes, I can't believe it. After all these years, I still don't know your first name. <laughs> he said, I don't have one. <laughs> so, yeah, it was based largely on Mike Holmes. So does, does the family of, of you know, Mike Holmes or him himself actually know that you base this character on him? Yes. Yeah, wow. they do. Did you now? So, yeah, so um, obviously we spoke about that. One thing I want to do now, uh, just before we go on to a little bit more about the character, is we've... Uh, came up, you know, I've come up with half of them and some of your biggest fans have also come up with them. Um, a little 10 question quiz all Ooh. about Grant Lee Budgeon. Ooh. And we'll see how well uh, you do in, in this. So we're going to, um, the first question for you, which is from a T. Marie Brown. She said, Hi, uh, she said, what was the name of the beauty range that Grant Lee and Maggie were selling? Oh, 
T. Marie. Oh. Yeah. Pass. Candora Cosmetics. <laughs> yes. Candora. Yes. Brilliant. Um, the Good next question. one it, uh, from Katie Harrison. Um, she said, who did Grantley save from drowning on a school trip? Bolton Smiley. Correct. Hey, hashtag boom. <laughs> I never expected you to do that on this interview today. That's amazing. <laughs> um, the next one we have for you. What? Now, this is, I came up with this one. What did Mr. Byrne remove from the classroom that really annoyed Grantley? I know this one because it was one of my favourite scenes in the entire show. It was the door. <laughs> it was such a comic moment. And then he created his own door out of cardboard. But no, it wasn't a door. It was a screen. A screen. <laughs> and then there was a, a moment where um, Rona and Shona, the, the twins in the show, were late for class and they had to come in and he opened up. A little bit at the bottom and they went underneath it was so funny yeah. to watch yeah um yes he decided he decided that uh, there should be no doors on any of the classrooms yeah uh -huh. more to Ooh. frustration um yeah. now this is from tara and she said what uh oh, so they're gonna love that you you've mentioned uh this um who did fleur think that grantley was having an affair with Steph Haydock? Correct. Do you know, I love that because it was such, that was one of my funniest moments watching the show because again, it was just you and Denise bouncing off each other that this security guard has convinced Fleur that uh, Grantley's having an affair and basically Grantley's yeah. life has turned upside down. Yeah. And of course, the security guard, Tim Healy, was, was yeah. in fact married to Denise Welch at the time. They're such a, they were a special couple. I know they're great friends now, of course. Um, yeah. Next question we're for you, which is old. from a Joe Redfern. She said, which I former know. pupil, uh, she said, which former pupil returned years later as a powerful figure and Grantley used to refer to him as being uh, thick? Bolton Smiley. No. Well, Bolton so, came back, of course, um, as an army in fatigues from the army and but when the, he was at school i didn't get on with him this was a powerful figure for the school uh, he became uh, he, he came in as a powerful figure ah ah was it the head a tom Cl chambers character no he so he, he had a son that also went to that school that was a bit of a uh, he was naughty. He caused trouble, riots, everything. Ronan? No, shall I tell you? Yes. Roger Aspinall. So, yes. Yes. Roger Aspinall. That was from Joe. I, that was a, a good a good and tough question. Um, very good. Very tough. Now, hopefully the answer to this is right. We got the information from I, uh, IMBD, which is normally pretty accurate. And they've said, how many episodes did Grantley appear in? Well, it varies, you know, because I, I see it. I see different numbers. Is it 146? No, it was a hundred. So IMBD have got it down as 159. 159. And online it also says 159. There was one site that said 160, but we would have gave you a point if you were closer than, than that. Um, <laughs> closer than 146. <laughs> um, which pupil hit Grantley with a chair? Oh, how could I ever forget that? Carla Bentham. Carla Bentham, brilliant character. Um, at the beginning of series four, what did Grantley wear, which caused the staff and the pupils to laugh every time they looked at him? Jaffa, Jaffa. The, the, <laughs> what did you, you know think? Said, you know why I said Jaffa, Jaffa? Why? Because... During uh, one day filming, I was sitting in my chair in the staff room and I got up just to go to the loo and my calf went snap. 
and I pulled my calf muscle. It was a tear. And I thought someone had karate chopped the back of my leg. It, I really did. And I had to have deep tissue massage. And I went to a Chinese um, massage place for deep tissue. And I went and uh, he said to me, ha, ah, Jaffa, Jaffa. And I said, what, what, what's Jaffa, Jaffa? And oh. <laughs> that's Mandarin. Jaffa is Mandarin for wig. Wow. Yeah. That's the, that was brilliant, though. I mean, when you first read the script and you realised that Bram, uh, Grantley was going to come in with this wig and trying to be oh. cool, what did you think? Because it was just was pure comedy up. gold. I was made up with that. I was, I was very, very sad to see it go. Um, but all, all good things must come to an end. Uh, the next question uh, for you is, which teacher did Grantley guilt trip into doing his marking, basically his dirty work, by pretending that um, she caused him to have a heart attack? Oh, Jasmine. Correct. Hey. Incredible. Um, the last one for you is, who did Grantley accuse of cheating, uh, plagiarising a poem, but actually it was inspired uh, for Grantley? Harley. Correct. So you got an impressive seven out of ten. Correct. So you really do know uh, Mr. Budgeon. I mean, are there any similarities between you and Grantney in real life? Uh, no. <laughs> um, it's, well, a dry sense of humour. Um, I think. Yeah, you know, I mean, we we can laugh about the the character and all the funny moments, but you know, we can't uh, forget that actually, Grantley gave us some of the most powerful and moving pieces of acting uh, and, and scenes in the entire show. There have been so many moments where I've been moved to tears watching Grantley, and I think uh, one one of them was with Fleur because that for me was when I realised watching it growing up that this guy's human. He's got a heart. He's got yeah. feelings, and yeah. the woman that he loves the most and is kind of his safety net. Uh, the thought of her going away from him was heartbreaking. I mean, yeah. when for you yeah. as an actor playing those type of roles, how how is that? It must be so difficult because you use so much emotion going into it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was firstly very very pleased that I was given uh, another dimension. Uh, that Grandly wasn't just going to be two dimensional, and that. Uh, I had something to to delve into and to to mine emotionally, um, and I did a little bit of research on Alzheimer's and its shocking effects, uh, and yeah, uh, Lorraine Cheshire is such a wonderful actress. Um, she was she made it you know very easy in a way. Um, to emote and uh, yeah, so again, you see, there were so many storylines that I thoroughly enjoyed. That was another one, um, and that's thanks largely to Lorraine. And I mean, for you, obviously, you played so many funny parts in the show. But when they came to you and said, "Look, you're going to be taking on such a big storyline," for for us, that get that kind of was a chance for you as an actor to show. What, what you can do and it was some of like I said the most moving uh, bits of materials so that must be good for you to be able to show everyone the other side you know of what you can do um yeah but you don't look at it like that um you don't think ah oh, now here's a chance for me to show people what I can do you know yeah um it's you just you tell the you tell the truth of the story yeah um and you get get inside the characters and you do a little bit of research. Um, although I do know a very famous actor when asked what he, what research he did for a part, he said, I learn the lines and I turn up. Um, but, but I, yeah, I like to do some research, especially as a lot of um, people watching the show have relatives who have the awful disease of Alzheimer's. And I wouldn't be doing it justice and them justice uh, if I wasn't to try and portray it as truthfully as I could. Um, one thing uh, we spoke about a couple of years ago, but many watching this, um, you know, wouldn't have uh, listened to that interview. 
uh, which of course was when the show moved to Scotland. Now we touched upon it slightly in the reunion. Um, it was just a, as a fan watching it, it was one of those moments, although I stuck with the show for another series because, you know, I, I loved it. Um, and of course we still had uh, Tom and Grantley in the show. It just didn't make sense. Nothing about it felt real. It, it seemed far-fetched, you know, to, yeah. to watch it. What were your thoughts on that when they first uh, spoke to you about the idea? I think it was um, you, it was a case of either moving to Scotland or finishing the show. And on reflection, that would have been the better of the two options to, to finish it, I think. Um, because it was a Manchester show. It was, its heart was in, soul was in Manchester. Uh, but it was a political decision, um, you know, way above my pay grade. So I just went with it and made the best of it. I mean, uh, he, again, I, I think you left just before he mentioned it, but Reese, who played Denzel in the show, actually said he found out from a newspaper that he, he had been axed. You know, he didn't even know there was no communication, which, you know, that was kind of a, a shocking thing to hear, that this guy yeah. that's been in the show for years didn't actually know about um, him yeah. being killed off. I did, didn't know that, yeah. So... Um, many people have been asking on uh, the Facebook fan page, uh, they, they really want to know what your favourite moment of the entire duration is. Uh, we've been inundated with people wanting to know. And I know that's a difficult question to ask. Just, oh, yeah. It is, it is. Um, favourite episode or favourite moment? or uh, favorite... It could be both, uh, episode or moment. I think favourite scene was when Bolton came back as yeah. the from the army with um, post-traumatic stress disorder. I think um, my death would be another. Um, the Alzheimer's story. There were so many. So many. Yeah. Um, Maggie, thing... Maggie and I getting together and yeah. um, all the storylines there and working with Denise. It just, uh, yeah, so many. Very difficult to choose one. Do you know, I've got to say, one thing I loved uh, about Granny was the incredible one-liners that he would come up. I think there was a moment where Mr. Mead... Uh, punched uh, somebody in the face and it goes to Grantley and he goes, not bad for us. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I mean, there, there was some wonderful writing in, on that show. There really was. Very clever. And, well, uh, yeah. We, I know we've been talking about an idea where hopefully people may get the opportunity uh, later this year, early next year, to, to meet you and some of the other cast if a convention um, comes about and we, we can make it happen which hopefully we will because there's a massive call for it well and also of course if anybody wants a, a personal greeting um, for a birthday or a wedding or anything from Grantley or from me go to celebrity video messaging it's called I'm on there and uh, I'll do you one well, we've got the link in the description on the video now so people can actually head over and get that. And it's such a good idea because, like you said, you, you can even do it in character. And we've, especially yeah. at the moment where there's not a lot to, to be positive about, you know, we're in lockdown. So actually receive a message of, you know, mm -hmm. an all-time Waterloo Road legend, I think is going to be a, a good boost for a lot of people. I hope so too. Thank you so much for joining us for, and, you know, for just getting to know a little bit more about you as, as an actor, but of course, finding out a lot more about uh, Grantley and your memories on playing him. My pleasure, Lewis. Bye-bye, everybody.